And we welcome you into the Sporting News Studios with Ryan Fagan, our college basketball writer. I'm Tom Vandervoort. We have the brackets. Yes. Hot off the presses. And we're going to go region by region through the NCAA tournament and help you with your bracket insanity picks, bracket insanity presented by Subway this year. We thank them very much for that. Let's look at the South region, uh, Ryan. Kentucky, number one seed in the tournament overall, right. number one seed in this region. Any problems for them through the tournament here? I tell you what, Kentucky doesn't have an easy an easy path to the Final Four. You know, they've got a there are a bunch of tough teams in that region, especially in that top half of the bracket. You look at teams like UConn, Wichita mm -hmm. State, Indiana. They've already lost Indiana, and Indiana's the number four seed in this conference or in this bracket. So you know, Kentucky, I still think they're the favorite to win the whole thing, but it's not going to be easy. Absolutely. And you look at Duke down at the bottom half of that bracket, right. they seem to have maybe an easier road. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It seems like Duke sometimes as the conspiracy. Duke's getting all the calls. The They're getting conspiracy all the calls. theorists love to say that. <laughs> but, you know, you look at the bracket, I'm looking at it, and they've got Notre Dame and Xavier. Neither of those teams are, you know, a ball of fire right now. Baylor's the number three seed down there. And Baylor. Lakey. Yeah, they, they really are. They have so much talent. They look so good in the win against Kansas in the Big 12 tournament. But they're, you're not sure what you're going to get out of them on a nightly basis. Right. So it seems like. I don't want to say Duke has a yellow brick road you know, to the Elite Eight, but they certainly have a – it's not the world's worst path there. Well, it's interesting for them. They don't play the world's best defense either, Duke. Yeah. Now, that's one thing that we've seen out of Duke so many times over the past – well, really ever since Mike Krzyzewski has been there is they play such good perimeter defense. They're really up in your face. They, you know, they love to say that you can count the nose hairs uh, of the opponents. So <laughs> they get right up in you, and they just don't have that this year. Yeah. They don't have the guys who play that type of defense, and I think that allows – opposing guards to get comfortable and when you're comfortable you're running better offense and you're scoring better and that's something we've seen from teams this year. Absolutely now of course picking upsets is one of the big things obviously right. it's going to help you in this bracket insanity game although you will pick the tournament round by round so you can't get your bracket blown no matter how bad you screw up right. the first round but what are some upsets that maybe jump out at you potential upsets here? Yeah we talked about Baylor and they're, they're flaking this sometimes and they're not always the toughest team in the world. In South Dakota State they have this kid, Nate Walters, who's a guard who's averaging 21 points a game, a lot of assists. He's a guy who's capable of going off 35, 36 points. And if he does that and right. Baylor doesn't respond, if Perry Jones doesn't play like a top five pick that he could be, you know, Baylor's a, uh, South Dakota State's a team that could, could pull off. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to, but right. I'm just saying the possibility is there. What about that 12-5 matchup? Seems like an interesting game to me. you got Wichita State at five, so they're obviously right. a very good team. And then you look at VCU. A 12 seed, but we know the run they had last year. Shaka Smart is a very good coach. I mean, what do you expect out of that game? You know, VCU is a team I liked coming into the tournament. They have a lot of new players this year, but they're guys who were around for the Final Four run last year, so they understand what the atmosphere is like. I liked them until I saw they were playing Wichita State. Wichita State's a team, I think, coming out of the Missouri Valley Conference as a number five seed, they're going to be a tough out for anyone. I think they're even, if they get to the Kentucky game, they're going to be a tough out for Kentucky. They've got a very veteran team, and we talk about experience with VCU. Wichita State won the NIT last year, and I know it may not be much to say they won the NIT, but you still have to go through the process of the tournament. Right. The, the final four for the NIT is in Madison Square Garden, so they were in that environment uh, against uh, you know some very good teams. They beat Alabama in the final, and so I think Wichita State's a team that – you know, like I said, I liked VCU until I saw who they were playing. Now, talk to me about the 8-9 game in this region, Iowa State and <laughs> UConn. UConn made a little mini run in the Big East tournament. Right. We know they have the athletes, they have the players, but that you said to me they seem kind of rudderless this year. So what do, who do you like in that game? Well, they have at times, you know, but you look at the talent. They've got Jeremy Lamb, who's a potential top 10, top 15 pick. They've got Andre Drummond, who's a top 10, top 15 pick. I mean, outside of the Kentuckys and North Carolinas, they have as much talent as most any school out there. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you have the all-transfer team at Iowa State, you know, guys <laughs> like Royce White and Chris Allen and, and a bunch of guys that Fred Hoiberg is really – uh, developed into a good cohesive team and they play a little bit different because they've got their big man Royce White who actually brings the ball up a lot you know so that throws defenses off from the very beginning and so they they present matchup issues and that's uh, an 8-9 game that whoever wins that game is definitely going to give Kentucky a run in the next so round. So who's winning that game in your mind? You know <laughs> I'm making you make one pick. Here. I want to I want to see Kentucky have to deal with UConn's talent. So I'm going to go ahead and say UConn. All right, UConn in the 8-9 game. That's our look at the South region. And don't forget, you can play Bracket Insanity. As I say, you won't get your bracket blown in the very first round. You pick it round by round. Just go to BracketInsanity.com. And that is presented this year by Subway. Thank you very much for that. And we'll be back to break down the other regions in just a bit.